Hi folks and welcome to today's video. <laughs> this video is a, a little bit different because it wasn't the video I had planned for today at all actually. In fact my plans <laughs> got a little bit changed uh, and the, alas that's why my dog Bella is here. <laughs> she wants to be <laughs> she, she wants to be Lassie like in the movies. <laughs> no, it's not Lassie, it's Bella. <laughs> anyway, Bella, the reason Bella is here in this video today and why am I doing a little bit of a sit down and chat video is because I've actually been in hospital. Yes, <laughs> nothing too serious, only my kidney. Um, I've only got one kidney left, so I was... <sighs> I was feeling a little bit sick when I was out on the west coast of Tassie and um, yeah, long story short, I had to go to hospital to, um, I ended up on a drip and anyway, the main thing is I'm feeling better now and I was meant to be on the east coast of Tasmania filming and obviously I got delayed and life just, life just happens and that's what happens on these adventures is that sometimes things just don't always go according to plan. So instead I decided today, because obviously I, I don't have any of the footage because I ended up in hospital and I decided to answer a few of the more stupid questions and statements that I have got of recent times. So I thought I'd do that instead. So let's get into it. Okay, the first interesting statement I got was, this was after I did last week's Western Explorer video, so I'm assuming he's referring to this. I watched your video, this ride is impossible, it can't be done, you aren't real. Sprung! <laughs> Actually, I was sitting in my lair, James Bond style, on the other side of the world, and... I superimposed holograph technology to put me on the bike on the Western Explorer Road. And the bike actually, I, I'm going to let you in on something. I actually own the technology that now can remote control from the other side of the world, from my lair, a bike. So I've got a holograph of myself on a road bike on the Western Explorer. I know, right? I'm bu I'm so damn busted. <laughs> I, I was sitting on it. I was sitting in my seat from the lair, like I'm gonna rule the world. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I remote controlled it and put a holograph of myself on the bike. So yeah, I guess I'm sprung. I was drinking my Cosmopolitan at the same time. So how's that for multi talented? Aren't you the lady who wrote that book? It's filth. Why should anyone follow you? <laughs> okay, that's because I am the lady who wrote that book. That book has gone on to help me help many other young women who have been traumatized by rape and assault and also help the countless lives of many young women who have been involuntarily snatched from their home and put into sex, into the sex industry, not through their own volition. So that book has gone on to help me help other sexual assault survivors seek peace and a new life. So that book his, this person is referring to is the autobiographical story of 10,000 Men and Counting. Now the book has, what happened was that when I was 18, I actually was um, set up and I had my drink spiked and I was gang raped by many men outside of a nightclub. And that event changed my life forever because I was a good Christian girl who was saving herself up for marriage. So this completely shattered my whole self-esteem. I had a fairly fragile self-esteem because I was bullied at school. Um, so I was already, you know, I, I, wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't the best candidate to be raped, let's put it like that. 
So not that anyone ever is, that's for sure. Now, what happened after that is I obviously, what happens with trauma, and this is what I now help other people to deal with, is that trauma can really shut your whole, um, there's certain areas of your brain that it can shut down and you can be just totally disassociated from yourself, which is what happened to me, which is how a good Christian girl could even end up in the sex industry because your whole self-worth, your belief about yourself is shattered. When someone violates your personal boundaries and rapes you, it, it can change your life forever. And this is what I've got a passion to do nowadays is so that other young men and women who have been sexually molested, raped or snatched from their home and taken away to be put into the insidious world of, of um, sexual crime, sex trafficking, I wanted to open the dialogue for people who have suffered trauma so that they don't have to have the horrible, shallow, awful existence that I did in the sex industry. It took me 15 years to muster up the courage to say no more, no more punishing myself for what someone did to me. Get, pick yourself up and get out. And it was hard to, it was hard to get out of the sex industry because I earned a lot of money in it and my self-esteem I thought that's all I could do with my life. It was the worst decision of my life and I regret it every other day of my life. And I now have to live with complex post-traumatic stress disorder. And it's not easy, it's not. But I, I'm a highly functioning person now. I've done an NLP master trainer um, I've done my full commercial pilot's license and I'm here with a message of hope and inspiration to help other people realise that it's never too late and that you can turn your life around and follow your heart and make your, make your life happen. Turn it around into something productive, inspiring and helping others. And that's now what I do with, uh, I've got a site called reinventyour.life I also, a percentage of my book sales goes to charities. I also help uh, rescue sex slaves, but unfortunately I haven't been able to do that because of COVID. So COVID sort of changed where my business was, my work with sex trafficked victims and rescuing them. It all changed with COVID. So thus, Her Motorcycle Adventures was born. So I've got absolutely nothing to hide. Uh, so my name is Gwyneth Montenegro. My book is called 10,000 Men Couldn't Stop Me. And I'm going to link that in the description below. So if you want to uh, read my backstory and how I came to go from gang rape victim I survived 15 years in the sex industry to realise don't punish myself for a crime I didn't commit and how <laughs> there's a lot in it, there's a lot to pack in that. I won't go over that in the video but yeah I survived the sex industry, I got out and now it's my life's passion to help other men and women live resourceful, productive, fruitful lives that they can be proud of and get out and find their dream, find their bliss. And that's why I love being on the motorcycle because it helps me with my PTSD. It helps me in so many ways. So yeah, that's um, occasionally I have to answer dingbats on the internet and uh, yeah, put them straight, but I've got absolutely nothing to hide. It's all in that book. So feel free to peruse the website, reinventyour.life. And when you support buying that book, a percentage of that goes to help preventing young girls being snatched out of their homes and into sex trafficking.
Okay, so the next statement and question is, you have a support crew, what are you, a sissy or something? No, just protecting my life. <laughs> I've had to deal with something that probably a lot of people would not have to deal with, and that is crazy ass stalkers who want to kill you. And because of the sensitive nature of my book and someone releasing my personal details online, because they've got an ax to grind with me, that set off a stalker chasing after me for two whole years. Now, I had to take the law into my own hands because I had no help from anyone and I had to deal with this person. And I have dealt with them because I've got, let's just say, they'll never, never come after me again. So they're dealt with, they're put into their place. So obviously safety is a huge concern for me. I have had other death threats and I've been held at knife point. So my safety is a huge issue and my team were like, what the hell are you doing, girl? So we had to come up with a compromise and that was to have a team who, I've got a four by four vehicle and they're gonna each tag team it and take it in turns uh, catching up to me every three to four days. I've also got a uh, ways for them to know where I am at all times and also to bring my beautiful collie to me because it's not an option for me to just leave her with a friend for all this time. It's just not practical. You wouldn't leave your child at home. Why would you leave your dog? Now the dog doesn't have separation issues because she's been a part of my team for the last uh, what is it two and a half years now so everyone on the team has had their share of looking after the doggy so she's really it, she's a team doggy and if anyone knows anything about collies they're very family orientated so they don't really suffer separation issues too much so i get to see my beautiful doggy every few days and that's just some of the practicalities i've had to face in planning this journey otherwise this journey wouldn't even go ahead so uh, I want to encourage you, if you've got a journey to do, don't worry about what other people have to say. Oh, you're this, you're not an adventure motorcyclist. You're this, oh, they're going to look like this. Do it your way. <laughs> Just like I've had to do it my way and I've had to address the practicality. You might have a spouse or children or pets or I don't know what it is for you, but I want to inspire those people to work out how they can make an adventure happen within the boundaries that they've got to uh, have. So you can do a journey too, but you might have to sort of figure it out how you're going to work it in with your lifestyle. There's ads on your videos. I'm not going to make you rich. <laughs> well, good thing you don't have to because you can go watch someone else or what have you, it's up to you. I just got monetized recently and the only reason I've actually turned on ads is because I'm going to put the lion's share of any advertising revenue that this channel makes into helping women that have been rescued from sex, sex trafficking, as I've mentioned in my story before. And so how you can help that is that you can watch the ads through. I'm gonna try not to put, I'm not gonna to put too many ads in the videos because you know, that's not really fair. But consequently, don't feel pressured to watch if a five minute ad comes up because I've got absolutely no control over the length of the ads. Please skip, a, I don't expect you to watch a five minute ad, so just skip that. So watch as many ads as you can. I'm not gonna put as many in and the lion's share of my advertising revenue will go to uh, women or men that have been sex trafficked. We've, I've actually so far, uh, with the advertising revenue, been able to house someone that we recently rescued from sex trafficking to put a roof over their head, so yay. And also with my books, a percentage of that also goes into that as well. So yeah, I mean, if you don't like the ads or you don't like me, easy, just go onto another channel that doesn't have ads or something. Yeah, I just thought, I can use this advertising revenue to further help other people. I can't watch you, I watch another motorcyclist.
Are you one of those strange people who just watch one show on TV and then watch a blank screen for the rest of the week? You have B-rolls, multiple cameras and editing. Clearly you have help, a studio and a heavy duty power supply. You're fake. Okay, so yes, I've got multiple cameras on the bike. I also carry about five power banks. So I have quite a lot of um, power supply to keep me going until I get to another powered campsite. I don't need to stay out remote all the time. I mean, that's just impossible with my workload. And of course, I, w I have run a business as well. So absolutely impossible for me not to hook into a power supply at a caravan park. So I get into caravan parks oh, every few days. And like I said, I'm going to mix it up between caravan parks, pubs, hostels, motels, etc. Just see how I'm cruising along. Uh, but yeah, I can assure you I do all the editing on a tablet or the computer. A lot of the time it's the tablet. I've got the uh, software on the tablet, so I'll sit there overnight and edit that on the tablet. And then every few days I will come and uh, stay at a powered caravan site or a hostel or what have you along the way. Girls can't ride. I don't know. I think my videos speak for themselves. can't stand your enthusiasm. You have a duty to be miserable like the rest of us. Now, I can sort of understand in these times of COVID how frustrating it must be to be indoors all the time. I can totally understand that. I get it. On the other hand, I have the opportunity to be able to get out and do this. And I've def I mean, I have spent the majority of my life totally miserable, unhappy, depressed, you know, even suicidal. And I've had a health scare recently. I've, ha I've had so many things go down and I'm like, you know what, it's now or never. It's now or never to get out and check off those things on the bucket list and find some happiness for myself. And I hope that by sharing my adventures if you're stuck indoors, that it'll help you plan and inspire you to do your own adventure as well. Okay, so that wraps up the stupid questions, the hard questions and all that for this week. I'm sorry it wasn't an exciting motorcycle adventure, but yeah, this, this happens. And uh, next weekend, I promise I have a doozy of a video for you because where I'm about to go, there's some pretty amazing scenery to be had. I'm so excited because I, I haven't seen a lot of this at all. So I am so excited to be going down the east coast of Tassie, filming some amazing scenery for you and having some amazing new adventures. I've only got a few more weeks left on the island. Oh my God, I've got so much to do before I get onto that mainland. So stick around and thank you to all you guys that do support me and have positive and awesome things to say. I, you guys just, oh, you just make my day. You really do. And this is why I'm doing this channel to share, inspire, I just just meet real down to earth people that love motorcycling and love adventures. Okay, I'll see you all on the next video. Have an awesome week, please, and stay healthy. Okay, I'll see you soon on the next video.